Hey data fans, Reid here. Today I'm here with an update in relation to the ribbon chart that I did last week that had a normalized sized ribbon that let us compare between categories. Now a follow up to this as I've been building this out for a client project is that they eventually wanted a slice for the top to pick between the percentage and the two other values that were being compared with that. So the thing that I wanted to do, as you can see here, is depending on the value that's being picked from the slicer and displayed on the chart, the two things below it inside of the tooltip also need to rotate. So I've actually managed to implement some unique scenarios using field parameters and relationships to actually get these to change. So depending on what you select at the top, the labels and the data for these primary and secondary tooltips will change as well. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and see how this was built. So as I mentioned in the introduction, we have three values to select from to show on the ribbon. We have our percentage, our numerator, and our denominator. We built this last week to create a ribbon chart that allows us to display a percentage with an evenly sized ribbon for each of the categories. If you're curious on how to build that, look over to the right or down in the description for the link to that. And I will focus this video on how to build out the field parameter to let us switch between these as well as the tool tips. As you can see here, when I have percentage selected, I get a numerator and denominator. I'm now going to select numerator, come back to the tooltip. Now my tooltips say denominator and percentage, and when I select denominator, my tooltip says numerator and percentage. So these lower two values here change dynamically based off what I select at the top. And the trick to this is actually three different field parameters that I created. My ribbon legend, my tooltip primary, and my tooltip secondary. We come over to the data tab here and look at the ribbon legend. We'll see that I have percentage numerator and denominator to return these three metrics here with that legend order that automatically gets included when you build out a field parameter. So as a reminder of how to build field parameters, that was done using the modeling, creating a new parameter, selecting fields, and then opening up the DAX folder. And the ones that I used was the ribbon rank because that creates the evenly stacked percentages that I wanted to see. By the way, you can also rename these in here. So even though it's called ribbon rank in there, I would actually want to call this percentage and then numerator and denominator. And all I did was click create, add the slicer to the page, and then do a bit of formatting. And that's how I got the ribbon legend. And these ones are interesting though. The tooltip primary and secondary are actually related. So if we go over to the model view, I actually have these connected based off of the sort order over here. So notice that both of these are connected to the legend order and tooltip primary order, tooltip secondary order. So essentially what I have done is I have keyed these together via relationship. So if I select percentage, it automatically is filtering these other two to the corresponding rows. So let's go ahead and take a look over here. Essentially, we can see that my legend order of zero is related to the ribbon rank. So it's my percentage. Now, if I'm showing my percentage on the chart, I would want to see my numerator as the first and the denominator as the second. So looking at my first or primary tooltip, you can see that the numerator has an order of zero. So if I'm filtering this slicer where this zero is connected to the other page, then this is filtering to the value with that same value here. So that's how I get my numerator for my first tooltip that's displayed in the well. My second one for zero has the denominator. So that's how they're able to filter down because I have these in the well of this visual, my primary and secondary. So these only show one value and it returns those results whenever I filter this. So this is filtering to a sort order of zero in the back end which filters those accordingly to numerator and denominator. If I select numerator, that's a sort order of one, filtering those other two via relationship now to denominator and percentage. And we can observe that here again, just so we can watch and track this. So back to tooltip primary, there is the order of one, denominator is first. For secondary, order of one, percentage is there as well. And last but not least for the denominator, which would be a two in that list coming down to here, that would be numerator and then percentage. So we only ever see three at a time in any particular order depending on that filter. So last but not least, just to again help us track this, we can see that there two equals the numerator for that first tooltip value and the secondary one is the percentage. Now there's a little bit of a trick to making these and not only doing the relationships. So part of it is that you cannot actually declare the same calculation twice. So when I built these tooltips, as an example, that secondary tooltip, just looking back here one more time, we can see that it's denominator, percentage, percentage is essentially the values that I want to display 
for my three different configurations. So what I actually did when I created this, and I'll walk you through it one more time. I'm going to go to the fields list. I'm going to go ahead and open this folder. And you might notice that I cannot place the percentage in there twice. So what I can do is I can place any other calculation. It doesn't really matter which one it is. I'm just going to order them here. And I'll show you as an example by creating it onto this page. Once this has been made, I can come in here, edit this for the title, change out the calculation, and then I basically can customize it at this level. So now I can actually create those duplicated values that are needed in two scenarios, because either if I select the numerator or the denominator, that last value that I would want to see for both of those scenarios would always be the percentage anyways. So that's how I built those out. And then, just getting rid of this now, it's a matter simply of, in the model, of creating a one-to-one -one relationship. So all I did, just to show you an example here, I took order, attached it to this. It's a one-to-one, -one, so it's many-to-many. -many, but this automatically filters the two of them. So they're basically offset from each other. Whenever I select from the slicer using this here, it automatically then filters to the offset corresponding values from both of these in the tooltip. And one of the most beautiful things about this is unlike a custom measure that I can do as well in the tooltip, which I give the measure a name, the numbers for that measure can change. But the one downside is that the label for that measure cannot be updated. That would be permanent. So the field parameter itself not only updates the value, but as you can see, the label for that as well, because it's technically calling different measures into here. So it looks a lot better without having to build a custom report tooltip page or anything else. You can leverage the native tooltips to get this selection of always showing any combination of a percentage and two other values or three or four or more, however many you want to use into here. But this allows you to rotate through them dynamically as you build this out and have those scenarios where you can always show any combination of all three. And this is just continued examples of one reason that I really like field parameters. There's so many different ways to slice and dice and display the data both on tooltip pages, through drill through, through simple selections on the legend. So I'm continuing to unlock and discover the art of possible for this. I'm hoping this is something you also found useful. If you have any questions, comments, or anything else, always please feel free to drop that down in the comment section below. I'm always looking to see how else people might utilize these or implement this solution into their own reports. But otherwise, if you like this video, check out some of our content here in the upper left. It always helps my channel grow, and it really is a great way for uh, the YouTube algorithm to continue to help keep the channel growing and flourishing. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you like this and share as you desire. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.